Thanks for joining me for another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to airbrush some skulls within smoke flames on the side of a Harley tank. So let's get into it right now. So you'll notice here I've got the Bar and Shield Harley Davidson logo cut out. This is to scale and I've weeded it so to leave a positive mask and I've put some blue Metamark vinyl on there as an application tape so that way I can see through it and then I've stuck that into position on the Harley tank. And now what I'm doing is using Trident White I'm starting to bring in some of those smoke flames so just using the white to create these flames and in order to sketch out this uh, smoke flame effect I'm using my fire tool template set uh, this is the regular size, you, you can also get them in a half size, so these are known as the mini set. The template here is the Skull Background 2 by Airshot Stencils, and I'm using that um, just as a loose mask to sketch in where I want my skulls to go. You can also see the positive mask of the Bar and Shield Harley Davidson logo, so that's masking off that area. So at the moment just uh, switching between the skull template and then obviously the fire tool templates just to get some of those shapes in there and you'll notice that I, um, I'll hold the template in a certain spot, get that sharp edge and then generally the other edge will be a softer one that just is uh, created freehand from the overspray. Now I'm using a smaller template here, this one's by Air6 stencils. And that's just to create some of these smaller skulls. You can see I'm sort of uh, paying attention to where that uh, Bar and Shield logo is. And I'm working my uh, underpainting around that. So just really... Uh, using the airbrush loosely at this point in time just to create that underpainting and then I'll bring my detail in as I go further along. So I'm just sketching with the airbrush at this stage, nothing too accurate as you can see. There's no need to spend all that time doing a fully accurate first layer when you're virtually going to go back over the top of it anyway. But everyone paints differently so whatever works for you. Now I'm using the Blair Dispersion Snap template and you can see the the dots are sort of spread out so they're dispersing hence the name and I'm using that to create some of the pitting and the texture within the skulls again a bit of uh, freehand to blend it all out and to keep building on my artwork as I go So if you've never had a go at creating these sort of smoke flames, then I recommend, you know, get yourself a bit of black card or even get a canvas, black it out. You can even buy black canvases now, so, or even a uh, LU panel will work and that'll simulate this particular surface more accurately. But start on a sample panel, give it a go, and if you make any mistakes, just use black to eliminate whatever you don't like and then just keep going. It does take a bit of practice to get that flow and to get it all to sort of work really nicely with the skulls that you're putting into it. So that's kind of why I like to start off with sketching my uh, basic shapes of where the fire is going to go and how that's interacting with the shape of the tank and then I bring my skulls into that. So you notice here now I'm switching to a transparent black. So this is transparent base mixed with black and I also add some reducer in it. And because it's transparent black, I've got it at a fairly uh, strong intensity, but you can definitely back that off by adding less black and just adding in another tone, especially if you're just starting out with your airbrushing and you haven't got this sort of control as yet. So if you do go darker, then you need to have a lot more control over the airbrush. So just gauge what level you're at and just apply whatever method works best for you.
So you'll notice now with this tone, I'm really starting to add in all the details, deepen my shadows. So effectively, I'm using this tone as if it's the only tone that I'm gonna use. I'm ignoring the fact that I am gonna come back in with some highlights and some solid black, just to further deepen uh, some of the shadows and add obviously those highlights. But if you paint as if this is the only tone and add in everything, leave the highlight spaces and really try and get that sense of depth with this one colour, then what will happen is it's already going to have that 3D appearance from just using this tone and the previous white underpainting and then any sort of highlights and shadows you, you add to it are going to make it look even more three dimensional and essentially you're going to create a much much better looking end result. So if this is the first time watching one of our videos, then welcome for all of our regular viewers, welcome back. I do hope that you're enjoying this video tutorial so far. If you are, give it the thumbs up and share it out. Let's build this airbrushing community together. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time I put out new content. So shading in over those teeth and now coming back in with the dispersion snap template using some of those edges you would have also just noticed that uh, some of the edges have got like a serrated edge which is really handy if you want that sort of uneven finish around a certain um, artwork that you're painting and can be very handy with something like this a skull where you can have those sort of uneven surfaces that will really make it look more impressive just up nice and close to identify where those teeth are going and then um, once I've sketched them in then I shade out from that. Again take your time you can see how close I am with that airbrush. This is the CMSB Micron which runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup so nice and fine and I usually run my air pressure through this uh, airbrush at about 20 to 25 psi with a 30% um, paint to 70% reducer mix. Back to white now and grabbing that template again just to add uh, more texture. And keep in mind all the colours that I'm using, um, even if it's not mentioned, I am mixing them with reducer. You can use the paint straight out of the bottle and that's uh, the case with most companies. I just prefer to always uh, thin them out because I just get irritated with tip drying. So. Whatever works best for you. Again, if you're just new to airbrushing, it might be more difficult for you to run those paints thinner. Uh, but if you've been airbrushing for a while, you should be able to have the control there to, to do so. So I decided to pick this side of the artwork on the tank. Um, the other side obviously has 
a similar theme, just different skulls, same uh, bar and shield logo and all that sort of stuff. If you are interested in seeing that, then leave a comment in the description below and um, I'll release that tutorial as well in the future. You could also check out the artwork that I did on the front fender from this project. That video has been up for some time. I'll pop a link in the description, so if you haven't watched that, go check that out as well. So utilizing that white uh, to add some highlights to the teeth so you can see how close and how sharp I'm working and just picking out some of those real bright highlights within the bone. You also notice that I sort of add in some of those flame licks as I go just to start to build the 3D element of the design. Okay, so switching over to black now, just to add a bit more contrast and deepen some of those shadows. So now moving on to transparent black again and starting to shape and detail the other skull. Again up nice and close, just moving with that tone very very carefully and picking out all the darker spots first. You'll notice that I usually start with the nostrils and the eye sockets and then gradually work out from there. Give me a nice starting point and those are the most forgiving areas as well. If you do make a mistake it's the darkest area where you can usually hide it. Switching back to white, add some more of the texturing and also highlights. Now there's a lot more uh, texturing that went on, I just sort of cut bits out of the video so you, you basically understand how it was done utilizing that template and just continually moving it around. 
I sort of spray through it and then move it as I'm spraying through it to get sort of more of a motion blur and then leave it straight flat onto the surface and spray uh, directly through it to get a more defined texture. So depending on which way you do it will create all different effects. Okay, so back onto the black and pulling out the detailing to deepen the shadows and detail the skull. The skull's not taking as long, it doesn't have lower jaw and it's a lot smaller. So still trying to put in a lot of detail in a small area. You also notice that I'm using that black to start to shape some of the flames and sharpen them up around the skull area and also deepen some of those uh, layers of the flames. So onto another skull now, uh, starting with the transparent black, adding some of that texture in there and then again freehanding in the detail. If you're not confident with freehanding it then um, and some of the areas you want sharper, you can definitely utilize the template, line up the template onto that particular skull and uh, use that to get your sharp edges. And if you're not sort of confident just doing this off the top of your head as I am, you can get some skull references, easy enough to do if you just Google skulls and uh, do an image search, you'll find lots of different reference images there that you can utilize to uh, use as a reference to better create your skull. These are more of a stylized look, uh, so they're not intended to be photorealistic. The uh, customer actually, the, the reference that he gave me was extremely cartoony looking skulls and I sort of said to him, well how about I do them in my style and I'll add a bit more realism to them as far as texturing and that is concerned and um, did him a little sample and yeah, he was more than happy so we went with that. Okay so using the white again and bringing out some of those highlights, you also notice the flame leak coming out of the eye sockets there. So I'll further define all of that later, but as I'm going you can see I've got uh, little bits of that working into the design already. Again coming in with black and finishing off those details in this particular skull. And moving on to the smaller skull with the transparent black again, starting off with that template and now working in all of the design. So exactly the same method, just repeated. I thought it'd still be handy to show each individual skull because they're all a little bit different. And then you can follow along and practice. So moving back onto the white and adding in some of the texture and then the final highlights. Okay, so now I'm using black and I'm going to define some of these flames and I'm also coming in and shading out some of the skulls, giving it a bit more shape if necessary. There's also a little mark on the front of the tank where it was, uh, when the painter prepped it, he sanded through slightly. You can see that little white dot there, so I'm going to go and hit that as well. Coming back in with white just to further define a few of these uh, flame edges.
and now uh, bringing some of those flame licks really into the design so that the skulls look like they're within the flame, not just uh, sitting on top of it. And brightening up some of the areas as well. Because I'm keeping in mind that once I uh, remove that positive mask, that's going to show a black emblem. So if I don't have enough white around it, it could just disappear into the tank or not look as uh, obvious. You see here with the black that I am again shaping the flames that are interacting with that HD logo and just uh, while it's all masked up just adding some of those uh, shadows and highlights just to make it look as 3D as possible and then once I remove the mask you'll see how I will make that all fit in with the, uh, the logo. So going ahead now and removing that vinyl so you can see how obvious that is now. But it's uh, looking like it's sitting above the complete design, which is okay if you want to go for that effect. But I want it to be a bit more um, interactive with the artwork. So I want the fire to sort of merge in around it so that the, the uh, logo appears to be within the smoke flame. And in order to do this, what I am doing is utilizing my fire tool templates and I'm just hitting some of those edges and bringing some, uh, some of the flame licks back over the top so that it's got that uh, effect of the fire being in behind it and in front. All right, so that way you're creating all these different layers. And here is a shot of the completed artwork on the side of the Harley tank. This is shown before clear, so all parts of this bike that were airbrushed were cleared with two-pack glossy clear. Unfortunately, I don't have any images or video footage to show you. The customer picked it up as soon as it was cleared. But this at least will give you an idea of how it ended up prior to that. So you can imagine when it was uh, glossy, it, it would have just totally made all that artwork really, really pop and look a lot more three-dimensional. So to further your learning, be sure to check out some of the videos and playlists that I've got listed here. And until next time, go grab your airbrush, do some amazing artwork yourself, and I'll see you again very, very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.